Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We've got Ideas by Elliot. Hey, folks, you're listening to Ideas by Elliot. And we're here with Ideas by Elliot. Podcast, podcast, <laughs> podcast. This is the Ideas by Elliot podcast, sponsored by Camera Corner Studios, Yikes Salon, Trisha Nell Law, and Release Wire. I'm Elliot Christensen, and normally I spend my time working with clients on internet projects, websites, marketing, email, all the stuff they need to get their business found online. This is my chance to take a break and talk in depth with the most interesting people I know. There are no rules, there's no censor, there are no do overs. It's raw, unscripted, and never edited. This is episode number 18 with the Mason brothers, Jared Mason and Justin Mason. In this episode, we talk about multi-generational businesses, guerrilla marketing, and authoring a fantasy book. We have two great music tracks from Kurt Gunn, and while that music plays, run over to iTunes and Stitcher and give a rating and a review of the show. It helps other people find us. Uh, <laughs> see, we got to do video. So that was uh, Kurt Gunn again, and that is what I need. Uh, hopefully, that's not a cover because, uh, yeah, I'm going to pretend like it's totally not because it's awesome. It might fall under fair use. I don't know. We use well, less, than, less than a minute. Right. See, that's the thing. I, yeah. Yeah. So. As long as we make, what, what are the rules of fair use? You have to make commentary of something. So I have to talk more about each. Track. If you talk about the track. Song. It was a and gr- keep it short. Yeah, it's a great track. It's great, really fly, great local artist. A really fly beat. Yeah, really fly. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> this is going to be one of those, huh? So, uh, I would like uh, my two guests to introduce themselves. So we'll start with this guy. Hello, my name is Jared Mason. From it's not a police lineup, so like <laughs> I know you're very rehearsed for that. So you don't have to. <laughs> go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Say whatever you want to say. You're very you you're being very professional and I was making fun of you and that's I'm a horrible person. Oh jeez. <laughs> so you're Jared. I'm Jared Mason with Mason's Red Owl in Green Bay. Nice. Okay. What's the name of your podcast? This is the Ideas by Elliot podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Justin, and oh, welcome geez. to the Ideas by Elliot podcast. I'm not wiping out my beginning. I already have my intro guy. He's You're, one of the best on the planet at I, intros. I, I, I know, but I I feel like I have a pretty good one. Have you heard it? Uh, no. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. It's it's along those lines though. So uh, I don't know. So if it's good, maybe I'll clip that out. I'm not going to pay you, but I, I might put that on. Yeah, fair use. If you uh, it's fair talk use. about <laughs> how awesome. <they> are. <laughs> Just uh, comment on how great that voice yeah, is. Yeah, right, right. It, it was really uh, pretty okay. His voice really hit those high channels. I was really impressed. <laughs> so uh, do you guys know why I asked you here? Well, we had a few ideas, awesome but we, we hope. Yeah, yeah, it was just hopefully to talk about how awesome we are. <laughs> um, well, yeah, and we're done with that now. So, <laughs> so we've done that for five seconds. Uh, you guys, we're out of well, here. Well, how are we going to fill another hour and a half? So, <laughs> so it's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> so, uh, so I want to talk about a few different things. Uh, I want to talk about the business that you guys mentioned. And uh, I also want to mention the uh, the author thing, right? Uh, you guys are writing some books. We have written so, some books. Yep. Uh, we can take those in uh, either order that you want, but you know, I'd like to you know kind of talk about each of those things. So we can. You want to start with the business? Sure. Let's start with the business yeah. since we probably have longer you know yeah. history there. So. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess people listening would be interested in uh, knowing where this place is and when you started, kind of the history. 
So go ahead. Sure. Uh, Mason's Red Owl is uh, it's my family's business, and it's a grocery store. And uh, of course, Red Owl used to be a, a large grocery chain uh, throughout the Midwest, started in Minnesota, uh, and it expanded out into Wisconsin and had many, many stores in the 50s and 60s. And uh, of course, Super Value bought them uh, in, I believe, 1988. Um, but in any case, um, my family, Merv, my uncle, and Jared, my father, uh, ended up uh, franchising out a Red Owl store back in 1969, and uh, they still have it in that location today. Uh, and so Justin and I are second generation uh, owners, second generation Mason brothers, if you will. And uh, the store is at 923 9th Street in Green Bay, and it's been there actually since 1948. And uh, we're happy to have it have it going strong. Sixty. So, so that business is as old as my dad. Sounds about right. That's super, <laughs> that's super crazy. Yes. So, uh, so your uncle and your dad started it. Well, the physical building was there. Oh, okay. uh, In 1948, it was built. Okay. And I think at the time, if I remember correctly, uh, it was a Red Owl corporate owned store. Or it might not have even been a Red Owl. Okay. During the first few years of ex- existence, then Red Owl got it. It was a Red Owl corporate store, and then. Merv and my dad were the first ever franchised Red Owl. Wow! Yeah, uh, in Green Bay. Okay. So uh, that uh, th- they had it. Um, they actually had another store uh, in De Pere as well, um, and then they sold that one in 1985, I think. You have to forgive me; my dates are a little wrong. No, um, just kind of going off what I uh, what I can remember the best of my abilities. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they kind of just they've been running the one store since and. Uh, I came into the business um, after college in 2008. I graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and came into the business after that in 2008. And Justin joined me in 2010 uh, when you graduated from UW Oshkosh. So we've been at it ever since. So uh, what did you guys go to college for? Uh, I went to college for marketing. Okay. I uh, got my degree in marketing and a, uh, they call it a certificate or a minor, I guess, yeah. uh, in Spanish. Okay. Major in criminal justice and a really? minor in Spanish. <clears throat> when I went to college, I didn't originally plan on working in the store after college. Well, that's where I was going to go with that, yeah. That, uh, he called, Jared called me. My I soph- didn't really either. Yeah, he called yeah. me my sophomore year. Uh, one night and told me he wanted to take over the business and of course you know my initial reaction is well I've already got two years in here so do I just right you know, hang it up and come home or do I finish so I, I ended up finishing the last two years and then I came home and two days after our graduation I went to work full-time with Jared Wow so it was it was nice to know I would have a job after graduation because I know that's a, a fear right now for a lot of people coming out of and you're much li- less likely to arrest me now yeah <laughs> 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 so, uh, all right, all right. Um, that uh, that's super interesting. So, um, wh- what were you thinking you were going to do instead? And like, why? How'd you come to that decision? Well, you know, I guess I always kind of wanted to be in, go into business, and that's kind of why I did the marketing route. Uh, so, that's something I was always interested in. Um, I guess I was never really, you know, a lot of a lot of parents have a business and they want their kids to take it over. Absolutely, right. I mean, that's yeah. kind of like the succession. Absolutely. Um, I was never really told to do that or even offered to do that, I guess. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, for, for some period of time in the 90s, early 2000s, our business struggled um, significantly. So I think those concerns, obviously the grocery business has gone to a larger store format in a lot of cases. Um, and so the small stores have had difficulty or did have difficulty in the past. And so I think I was never really pressured into taking it over um, and you know I don't what changed specifically so did that bother I, you I, did it bother you that you weren't pressured you know at the time I don't think it bothered me I think what changed is the fact that maybe I just kind of got it in my head that I might never have another chance to take over a business or to, sure. to try to run my own business. Uh, we own the building and the land, okay? So we don't have a landlord. We don't have leases and rents and, and uh, you know, liens mm-hmm. against the building. Nice. And 
So thinking about that, it's like, wow, that's not that bad of a position to be in. You probably don't get that any any other time. If I ever wanted to try going out on my own, because at, at the time in 2008, they were in the midst of pretty much going to sell it. I mean, it was wow. pretty much going to be sold within six months or a year or closed. And uh, so I think I think that finality probably got me thinking more than anything. If I don't do it now, I'm probably not going to do it. There's probably not going to be another chance. And I guess, too, there wasn't a lot of pressure on me to, at that time, there wasn't a lot of pressure on me to succeed, if that makes sense. If I screwed things up royally, I just, you know, just did a terrible job and the business went to hell and it closed, it wasn't going to be in any worse spot than it was. So was there an overlap period where... Uh, you know, the older brothers uh, were still in charge. Like, you, you don't have to talk about the finances if you don't want to, but like, uh, I mean, do they still own part of it? Do you, uh, how, how does that yes. stuff all fit together? All four of us are, are owners. Okay. So basically, so you're like there's partners. Yeah. There's, okay. Well, yeah. The, the business set up as a corporation yeah. and there's shares and okay. we each own a certain percentage of okay. it, but we all do have ownership interest in it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I got in there, initially I was. I was probably more, I was unsure of what needed to be done. Uh, so I was very thankful to have them there. Sorry about the beep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have the iPad on and have no beeps. I forgot your iPad that's, was plugged no, in. No, that's that, my bad. No, that's all cool. That's cool. I didn't turn the timer on, so that's good. I, I there's, We have no choice. To our listeners at home, you'll yeah. hear a beep every 10 minutes. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay. So since, since I... Uh, screwed that all up. Uh, you maybe will have to make an edit. No. Oh no. Oh no no. Okay. No no no. no. That's that, that that's that's crazy talk. We won't even edit <laughs> out talking about <laughs> editing it out. <laughs> no, we won't even edit this part out where we're talking about editing out. <laughs> that's that's how ridiculous this is. And oh, and it cuts into your time. I feel bad, but ah, that's the way it is. So um, so you went into marketing. That sort of makes sense. But Justin went into criminal justice. Sure. That totally does not make sense to me. So. Well, I think again that whole thing about I never planned us really yeah. planning or being. So why did you want him, or why did he want it? Like I don't know how that worked. You told me he needed help. <sighs> I, no, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, there's nobody else he can trust more than me. Yeah. yeah. So you just looked at it and you're like, oh my god, this is overwhelming, and I I need somebody I can well, trust that I don't have to train. Well, we had worked together in the store beforehand. Uh, obviously, when we were younger, that's yeah. where we worked all through high school. Right. So we kind of knew some of the basic ropes. Sure. It wasn't like we were walking in completely blind right. to what we had to do. Right. And I mean, it's my brother. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I love the guy. I mean, you know. Right. Wait. So is that recorded? <laughs> can you cut that part out and send it to me? <laughs> I, I can so isolate I can, it. So I can have that Wait, because sure. you want, do you want do you want a ringtone? I can make a ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> it's my brother. I love him. <laughs> Uh, see, but of course you do, right? Well, I mean, yeah. so I mean, I wanted to ask him. Obviously, wanted to to ask him if he would help me. I mean, that would be. I was probably going to try it. If he had said no, I want absolutely no part in this whatsoever. If he had said that, I was probably going to go try it anyway. Right. And again, that goes back to that I had nothing to lose sort of thing. We were selling it anyway, right? There wasn't like it had been built up, and I'm coming in there with all these expectations. Right, that wasn't what it was. So no, I was going to great go, position. You know, in a way, it was a stress-free position, kind of. Okay, so I was going to go in and try it, whether he came with me or not. But I was certainly much happier to have him come. You know, come on board and and say, yeah, let's do this. You know, that's good yeah. to have that first person with you. You ever get into a business, you want to have another person that can help you. Right. And Justin is very good at certain things that I'm not good at, and I'm good at things he's not so good at. And so it really has that, it really meshes well. So, other than hip hop, what are Justin's skills? <laughs> For the record, that's not one of my skills. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, and I, I, I don't, I don't think college is the be all I know, but you have a, some background in marketing, right? So you're bringing that into it. <laughs> okay, so, for the record, yeah, most of the great marketing decisions 
that have been made yeah. for Mason's Red Owl have been Justin's idea. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, they really have. Uh, when I was, Can you cut me that sound clip as well? <laughs> so, you, so, 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 I don't know. I told I mean, you that before. It doesn't just have to be a Justin Love Fest, but... Uh, uh, so he, I am putting my brother over though for some of his exceptional contributions. I mean, yeah. they've been really great because I talk about that sometimes with other people, mm-hmm. and I've told them because I will say, "Yeah, I graduated in marketing." And they right away they say, "Oh, well, no wonder all this stuff that's happened here sure. and all the good things that have happened here are because of you." And that's not true You're at like, all. Well, like one of them is. Yeah, but <laughs> but that's really not true. Well, all of them. Are. And you know, <laughs> certain th- you fall into that trap of having preconceived notions sometimes sure right and as we get into i just want to segue into the whole facebook thing yeah since when i was in college that was when facebook was just coming out sure right and just like he created for facebook was a way to check out the girls right i mean that's what it was yeah you know you said was what it still is (laughs) i'm not aware of that (laughs) well it was when it first started so anyway (laughs) What we were able to create from when, when I was creating these websites and things for our business was a group, mm-hmm. okay, or something, which really wasn't that great. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't even know if you could put videos on Facebook way, way back. Or if you could, it took a lot of effort. Yeah. Sure. So it wasn't something I was interested in. Right. So I just had that, that that's how Facebook always was. Even mm-hmm. here we are way back and uh, way up in 2013, 2014 now. Sure. And uh, so the whole... That's a Facebook read all deals video and posting it to Facebook and actually getting people like like a page on Facebook was something that I didn't even realize you could do. Sure. So that was all Justin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean, there's the whole like there's guerrilla marketing and there's all these like uh, these small business concepts that you know when you go when you go and it depends, right? I mean, in college they talk about small business things too, but yep. you know they're expecting for you to, um, oh. We just got yelled at that there's no live stream. Oops, sorry. <laughs> well, at least she'll still be on the show this week. Uh, what? Because it beeped. Oh, because it. Be- we're- oh, so that counts. That wasn't that my was fault. Gina. Oh, okay. Yeah, because sometimes show, we stream yeah. it live. Oh, yeah. I see. But we're she- not. But so they're, they're- we're not important enough to do that. No. Oh. Uh, well, you're not. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. No. Um, I I just forgot and uh, and and really it's just Gina and Don that listen and and then sometimes like one other random person will be on. <laughs> so it's make them wait till the end of kinda middle kinda November, right? Earthy. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that so we struggle with that as business people, you know, because you kind of want to uh, uh, handle the the distribution of your product, right? And um, if it's out there live and people can kind of cheat the system and listen to it early, well, it it takes away something from when it when it debuts right sure like like if we could have all seen star wars yeah right away instead of seeing all the ads for it yeah we would have seen it right yep yeah yep. um, gotta build the hype yeah i mean sort of <laughs> i mean so that's part of it right um you have to build the hype but you also um you can't you can't lay out all your tricks all at once sure so there's there's something to be said for like a uh, I don't know, not over calculating it because you want it to be authentic, right? But um, to having sort of a, a, a cadence, yeah. kind of a, a rhythm to your marketing so that you don't have a bunch of stuff in September and then you're like, ooh, I'm really busy and then you have nothing. Yeah. So you kind of have to have a plan. Um, yeah, and we struggle with that a little bit too. Oh, every, oh. I think every small business does. We, yeah. It, but, you know, we have brought these Red All Deals videos, kind of doing them once a week. And trying to make sure we upload them on a Thursday. That you know, just like every Thursday, pretty much like clockwork, we're putting one up there. Right. So that, that seems yeah. to be working. But so, so that's that's what this is. You know, this these go up every Wednesday right now, and I'm gonna. I don't know if it's gonna be Wednesday and Friday, Wednesday and Saturday, or Tuesday and Friday. I don't know. So, um, but uh, in November, when I have more, I want to have uh, double them up. Okay. Um, but they're not. I don't just want to. You know, even though we have a few that are recorded, one every day for yeah, like a week, and right. then nothing for two weeks, which yeah. is exactly what would happen because there's just <laughs> certain certain times where it's super easy to schedule, and then certain times where it's not. Yeah. Or in the summer, there's a week where the weather's great, and nobody wants nobody would would want to be here. Sure. But, this is a know. great day today because it's raining outside. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. Nothing, this it, is this yeah. is a good time to it's, record. It's winter, and then it'll be summer next week. It's gonna be yeah. weird. It's gonna oh be, yeah. yeah. Welcome to Wisconsin. Yeah. I know, well, I know, but it's gonna be in the 60s in November. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little weird. Global warming. So, all right. So I, I feel like uh, I want to hear more from Justin. Sorry. It's fine. Um, so Okay, Justin, I, 
I, I, I might not even know this. So, so fill us in here. Because when we started, okay, so when we started these Red Owl Deals videos, yeah. I would just go on there and show the four deals. But we'd yeah. take four deals, five deals, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'd just hold them up yeah. and just talk about them. That's sure. all I do. And I mean, it was better than nothing, right. but it was kind of boring. You know, it was every other ad ever. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest. So where did you, <laughs> how did you get the idea to do a Red Hole Deals video like you do now? Because most of the, almost all of the deals yeah. and all the videos are his idea. So really, where did you get that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is that fair? I, it just, uh, to be, to be brutally honest, it kind of just happened. So yeah. we were just, I just got to the point to where you know, I'm at the store all day, and I, again, I mean, no disrespect to my business because I love my store. But the brutal truth is I, 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 I like being creative, and I like going outside the box and trying something different. I do not like... Same old, same old. Same old, same old. That, that, is, that is like the quickest way... So this is way. the audio. Uh, oh, hello. Oh, another Red Hole Deals video. Oh, oh, oh. oh, we were shooting a Red Deals video. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Justin, and welcome back to another... Red Owl Deals video. So, in case you missed the amazing, (laughs) awesome, epic four deals with Red Owl Deal Hunters video we did last week, essential every day, 64 ounce apple juice, 99 cents each. So the audio doesn't doesn't really do it justice. Yeah, this is a. Uh, you so, have to see it, so <laughs> yeah, so so in the video, there's um, me uh, and, 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 and and there and there's uh, a strange young man who is. Uh, don't, don't 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 call Gage strange. He is a absolute genius. Okay, and I mean that respect. So, but he you was, can call him strange. So he was but, sort of like behind you, and yeah. sort of mocking your behavior. He, so right? he did that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he made kind of made fun of me in the background, and I didn't know it at the time. I like in the video, I. I actually made a mistake and I, I I couldn't like I just couldn't process what I was supposed to say next and I'm like and I saw we're, we're going off well, it's we're, just it's live it's yeah, not we're not and, scripting yeah. or writing lines we just pretty much you yeah. just pretty much go and so he's <laughs> standing behind me and he's screwing around making whatever he was doing and making faces and I couldn't remember what I was supposed to say for these cans of soup. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, we gotta start this whole thing over. I'm gonna make myself nice. look like a total idiot, right? Right. And Jared's rushing me to get home because we you know we've been there for eleven hours. We wanna go home. Oh sure. And so I just shouted, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> and it saved the whole video because then he yells, Never! And he runs up, right? And that was the birth of the deals I troll. Did not, I've never seen that one. That's it's like great. three or four back. Wow. So that was the birth of the deals troll, right? But yeah. now here's, here's, the, here's the thing, though. It allowed me, it gave me that second to go back, then read the types of soup, and then we yeah. just kept the video going. That's uh, a couple. So yeah, we are yeah. going completely. When we Most do of it is 100% these, we can, blind. We go completely yeah. live. I mean, yeah. I just we, we film them with a little hand hand camera yeah that's all and i go three two one and we just go and yeah yeah i mean if it gets royally screwed up we'll cut another yeah. take but yeah. otherwise we just try to do it like three minutes that's it that's so it, it really it just began <laughs> so that's super hilarious the, the, the audio deals, doesn't really do it it sort of does it justice but it's the crazy like, really great and that's the first time you ever see me in a compression shirt by the way because i'm very, <laughs> i'm very no i am very shy about my upper body that's something i don't but especially you, on camera for thou- but, for but you were people. but you were doing a muscle pose <laughs> on purpose yeah because i was like how can we start this video do, do people really, do muscle poses on accident to really get some attention how can we really do i'm like oh hello welcome to it. so anyway so i just got to the point where I, I, I don't want to say I was bored with every day because that's not the truth. I was, I needed to add something to my job that could really let me share my creativity. Yeah. And when I finally got to do that, th- that makes like Thursday nights, Gage and I look forward to him now. Uh, he's he is an incredible young man. He he's just he's ju- he's very very shy. He's very young, but he is. I've seen him grow a lot since he started working there with me and Jared. And he's really he's come a long way. And it's, so this guy's name is Gage. Gage McKee. Yeah, he's wow. a really he's a, that's oh, a radio voice or radio radio name. Yeah, he's, <laughs> well, yeah. He's a, and if you really like, if you really want to go crazy with it, just get him into WWE, and his finisher should just be the twelve gauge, you know, and uh, just a big forearm, you know, and that's it, right? <laughs> But not, anyway, it all goes back to wrestling somehow. <laughs> hey, so, well, you know, we knew it would devolve into this. Nick is uh, like he's my connection to wrestling. I know Great. nothing. I know Great. nothing. I, ACW. But, yeah. Uh, I know. Right? <laughs> Old school. <laughs> that was that was. Part, that was when wrestling was me. good. What yeah. happened to it? I don't even know what you're talking about. That but, sounds like a type of power supply to me. <laughs> 
I have no idea. It was local, man. Yeah. It was uh, like. Oh, okay. Our, yeah, that's right. Okay. But all right. So so anyway, so 12 gauge, just kidding. Gage McKee, he's, so he's just sitting there and he's just doing this crazy stuff and he, he does like the whole voice thing and he's not afraid to act a little kooky because, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what do you really care what somebody else thinks about you? Be yourself. And that's what I told him, and it's yeah. been great. It's and been so really he's 17, 18? 18, 18, 18. Okay, yeah, okay. 18. Okay. I mean, I, I only saw a little clip. Sorry, Gage. Don't uh, 12 gauge me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's. A, I'm quite he's, confident he can take me down. I'm not worried no, about he's that. No, he's a really. He's just trying to be accurate. He has grown so much since he since he started working there, and I'm just. I'm, I'm really happy with where we've gone to and what we've been able to do there. And the deals videos have really, I feel like they've helped Jared and I reach our target audience very effectively and those 1400 however many people it was well like remember 14? when we started the facebook page we had like 40 or 80 yeah. or I, you know, so I, I remember when we had 80 when we had 80 fans yeah and yeah uh, that's an eight zero yeah, sure eight zero. <laughs> and a customer was in one day and he's buying a batch of fish and i said look jason i said you know would you mind doing a, a quick interview with me on camera he said about what and i'm like well you know talk about the fish and just maybe you know Let's just shoot a little bit about the fish. Let's talk about the fish a little bit. And he's like, "Okay, sure." He's because like, he was coming in every week, and he, you know, he really enjoyed it. And uh, so we did that, and that was kind of where it all started. That was where we started thinking, "Hey, we could actually advertise here on Facebook." And so we went from eighty to like one twenty overnight. Nice. In like two or three days. And yeah. then we slapped a sign yeah. up front that said, hey, follow us on Facebook. Mason yeah. Brothers run out. And yeah. all of a sudden, we're doing a weekly or monthly or, you know, for a while, we didn't do a lot of videos. But then it got to the point where it's like, okay, we're getting these groceries in every week. We should have at least four products every week to start talking about deals. And it just, phew, well, just blew up. Well, you know, that's one of the biggest struggles for small business, right, is getting the word out there, right? Mm-hmm. People think small store, mm-hmm. high price, right? It, no right. matter what. Right. You, you know, it, it's like ingrained in no and i don't know how you do it but uh but gina talks about uh what is it like uh certain things like bread <laughs> like that's that's the place we yeah ha- you know we have to go to your store for, yep. for that the fresh baked bakery has been and the fresh bakery very, we do uh, but successful. so there's certain categories yeah. that so uh so i'm interested in that so like how, how are you able to do that do you, it's are you just a lot of work? <laughs> yeah. So well, no, I mean, not getting the word out, but how are you able to uh, to compete? Um, and I mean, you are, and yeah. you, I mean, like you're one of Green so, Bay's most famous businesses. So I mean, I'm not. Um, yeah. uh, I, I, it's it's amazing because there aren't small grocery stores. There aren't. Yeah. And there true. and and there's. I mean, right down the street, we got a quick trip. We got uh, uh, you know another convenience store gas station kind of deal and so those kind of come at you from one end and and then you got cops which i feel like is kind of not i don't know i i don't want to offend anybody ever i'm super not offensive but i feel like cops is not hasn't been doing super great lately well it's still a big store that's right down the road yeah so and it's still a place people can buy groceries i mean the thing is it is hard to separate my can of beans from their can of you know what i mean sure so you are kind of selling something that people don't necessarily think, okay, the essential everyday brand is worth an extra 10 cents than the great value brand. You know, I don't, right. you know, right. so you really struggle with that. And, you know, we buy from Super Value, mm-hmm. which is one of the largest grocery suppliers in this country. Right. So they supply festival. So I'm buying at yeah. the same ability okay. or the same price as festival yeah. is. Okay. So that's nice that is nice yeah <laughs> you know and that so a, a lot of a lot of the pricing comes from your supplier right and they've opened up a lot of deal programs to us that maybe hadn't been open to us in the past right and they said hey do what you got to do good and we basically said okay and we're just going to buy whatever's on sale. We're small enough mm-hmm. that people don't necessarily expect 18 brands of ketchup when they come in. Right. You know, right. that that expectation isn't there. Uh-huh. So for us, it's better to have two and to buy them on sale and to promote them. Right. And so that's really what we've kind of tried to do throughout the whole store. Nice, nice. And uh, that's worked out well, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so I, th- I feel like that... that uh, I don't. I don't know much about about the grocery business, but um, I know that um, that positions you well against convenience stores. Yeah, because uh, uh, it's almost a point of pride that everything's more expensive there. 
convenience stores are great if it's like midnight and yeah. you got to have something, yeah. right? That's yeah. that's fine. You'll pretty, but, pay much, you'll pretty much pay whatever for it at that point. Yeah. Right. But, you know, otherwise. They have like one on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's well, a different. Some, some things, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's a different business, right? Mm-hmm. That's a gas-driven business, mm-hmm. right? I I need to sell you a cartload of groceries. Right. I mean, that's our goal when you come in our stores, that we can get you a cartload. And you didn't pay more for it than you would have at one of the larger stores. I mean, that's really no matter, the overall goal. No matter what the impression is about big stores. Uh, the big store has, we, still has to make money. Yes. I they, mean. They do. You know. They do. Absolutely. They do. So, the, the, like I said, it is, it is probably an image-driven struggle for not just us, but for most small businesses, yep. right? It's how do you really break through that and get people to say, hey, there's value there. I need to go there more often. I don't need to spend six hours walking through a store, walking through a parking lot. You know what I mean? So, so there's, there's been a resurgence, I think, in this uh, uh, desire to um, not help small businesses, but to but understanding that you guys are invested in the community yeah. a lot, and I know yeah. you do. And I would like you to talk about some of those things that you do. But um, so uh, I was I was kind of at ground zero for the whole Walmart controversy downtown, and um, there are a lot of people who uh, despise the big box, the big box stores. And uh, boy, if you guys would have said you were going to move downtown, they would have been uh, hooting and hollering. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, w- w- I was thinking about that too before I started this. I was like, I don't, you know, I don't know if a different or a bigger store is in the works. Right. First, because of the cost, building those things are so expensive. Well, you have a building that's bought and paid for, and that that's is, a good place to be. You know, and that's the <laughs> truth, though. It is. You you have something there, and there's plenty of room for us to grow within the business we are and where we yeah. are. I mean, there's a lot of houses around there and a lot of people. Amazing. And uh, I think getting our reach out is is probably it, it's always a struggle. Right. When you're small and you don't have a huge budget, but that's why, you know, the Facebook thing has been so yeah. beneficial for us. Yeah. I mean, that's my whole thing. I, I love small businesses. So, I mean, for 15 years, almost 20 years. Wow. Uh, you know, I've been building websites for yeah. tiny businesses. And uh, so it's um, it's very interesting to me to see how, uh, especially as time goes on and, and the business world changes massively how different businesses are able to compete in different realms, right? Uh, you know, so even uh, Camera Corner, uh, you know, has, has developed this uh, the studio. See that awesome segue? That was a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, in reality, this is a, this is an amazing part of what Camera Corner has been able to do for sure. uh, almost. I don't know. I don't know when Camera Corner started. I'm going to get that wrong. I should know that. It's like fifty. Yeah, it's about this. It's six, about it's about you know about lots the same, of years. About, it's been they've been around about as long as Mason Brothers, and it's uh, things have changed. Obviously, you know uh, there are cameras in here, but um, so uh, I would like to ask my guests what their impression of this place was when they when they walked in. <clears throat> I always I try to include my guests in, in well, my little. We're, this is this is an ad spot. Full disclosure. Okay, but, ad yeah. spot for Camera Corner. Well, yeah. I didn't know they had a studio right. until I came here, and uh, I wasn't sure what I was walking into initially. I was like, "Oh, hey, this is this is pretty well set up. This is pretty great. I'm uh, I'm excited to do well, this." Well, and <laughs> J- Justin seems to have some background in in uh, AV nerd stuff. Right, because we were talking. Now he's gonna act like he doesn't know. He's giving me the blank stare. <laughs> no, I, just, I do. I do. Like we, have, uh, Gage and I actually do a YouTube yeah. channel, and so like you know when I was talking about the Yeti microphone before, that's yeah. why I have one. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have. I'd have been like, what? So you called out some of the brands that that, that you know. Yeah. There's some Sure microphones, yeah. and yeah, yeah. So what would you think about that stuff? Well, I mean, at least you know, I mean, you're you're working with you're working with uh, legitimate quality equipment, and it, it really it allows you to, I guess, communicate better, which is very important. Uh, well, sound. We're doing a podcast. See, here's the yeah. thing, because any uh, I was watching another YouTuber video on this. Anybody can do 1080p these days. Sure. Seriously, that's a dime a dozen. I don't care who you are. If you can't do 1080p, stop wasting your time. But quality sound, quality communication is extremely difficult. Yeah, I even struggle with that with my setup at home, mm-hmm. where I wish I had a little more soundproofing or you know a little bit better containment or whatever. But good sound is extremely important. Communication, I think, is key. It always has been, and as far as I'm concerned, it always will be. 
So, uh, Nick, you want to jump in? You had a thing you wanted to... Yeah, actually, I'm pretty excited. I get to uh, invite more people coming in very soon. Uh, Camera Corner does an event every year called Demo Days. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's where we bring in our, our manufacturer reps and our distribution reps, and, and they'll be available in the store so that you can ask them questions about product. But this year, because we have the studio, we're also now able to offer photography classes on demo days. So uh, that's coming up on December 3rd and 4th. Check our website, cccp.com, for the full schedule. But uh, there will be classes here that are dedicated to working with external flashes, classes dedicated to uh, working with uh, studio lighting or backdrop options. Uh, and, and it's just a really exciting opportunity coming up. Uh, do, you, do you know how much those will cost? Uh, from what I understand, and this isn't set in stone yet, yeah. but the plan is to run the photo classes for 25 bucks. Wow. Uh, if you just have product questions and want to talk to the manufacturer reps, they're just here for you to work with. Nice. I mean, they... What's f what's great about demo days from an employee standpoint is these manufacturer reps come in from like Nikon, Canon, Sony, uh, HP, and and they just basically work the retail floor like the rest of us. So they're there helping you, just like you'd have one of our guys helping you. Wow! So you're getting the that like central knowledge, right? Yeah, that's 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 killer. Right. Uh, so I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. You want to drop your contact info? Oh, sure. I mean, if you want to talk to me about the studio and how we can make a affordable production for you, uh, you can reach me at 920-272-0148. We won't give you a half hour spot anymore. That's fine. I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure you've gotten complaints. No, no, I nobody. No, nobody. Nobody's complained because they all have ad blocks. You know what? I almost <laughs> right, all your listeners right, right, are right. Apple users. You know what? I, I almost wish people would like not complain publicly but i kind of wish they would give me feedback and be like you know like i uh i super appreciated the uh don't don't have gum in the microphone comment. there you are <laughs> well you know you just just got to make a point at the beginning or the end of your show to tell people how to contact see, you see i have a pro here because you think everybody's going to your website and listening on the online right, player right. that you spent so many hours coding <laughs> <laughs> no in reality they're probably not <laughs> i don't know it's pretty snazzy i don't know i just <laughs> when i want to hear the show i go yeah. to your facebook page and click and it starts to play Oh, yeah? So Sweet. I think that that's playing through your website? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, I do want to loop back to uh, to your business yet. I, so I, I, I have heard from people that uh, the thing that they are most interested in is hearing entrepreneur stories. So, And that does have to do with your book. So I do want to talk about your book because if I don't talk about the book, uh, I will be excommunicated from my house. Oh geez, we have some major fans over there. Kind of like religion. Over yeah, there. we like that. We so, got fan mail the other day. That yeah, was awesome. We actually, for, got fan yeah, mail. Yeah, for real. That's, for real. This okay. kid's like an ultra fan. Um, like somebody mailed us a letter. Handwritten letter. Yeah. Like yeah. A sample. Well, you just want we can, wrote. Let's let's just jump into that. We can, we can come back to the to the store unless there's something else you want to mention. Uh, at the end, I want to I want to make sure everybody knows how to get in touch with sure. you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So. Let's make sure we do that. Yeah. The, but yeah. Uh, so let's talk about this book. So right. you know, so so uh, you guys are running a grocery store, probably Green Bay's most well known grocery store, and um, very community involved, super busy. Uh, you know, I understand. You know, you have some expertise that's still there but you guys are i see you know you guys are working your butts off were there uh well six days a week yeah uh seven days some weeks but yeah well it's a six you, seven you, day a week you made that very clear the only day we knew that we could yeah. be recording is wednesday yeah I'm like if you don't want to record wednesday we'll have to maybe it'll i don't know the, it'll be in the middle of the night yep it's gonna be after eight o'clock and then. Yeah. Add my place in the basement with my uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is and so so that creativity you're trying to channel into into being an author. Right? <laughs> oh, I wasn't trying. How did the books I even start? Succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try. Oh. <laughs> See? See, it's the it's the confidence. Justin uh, just he, he just, doesn't he just it. oozes confidence. Uh so do you want the true story or do you want me to make it sound make me make myself sound like I'm a visionary? <laughs> Because the second you one's know a what? lie. You know what? I, I, I actually do want the true story. Okay. You know what? The, you know what? I, th I think that... Uh, the true story with bits of lies scattered throughout. So, uh, <laughs> so, so Gina and I went and saw the Steve Jobs movie the other night. Sure. And complete fiction... And but you know they did have to compress the you know the guy's life story sure. into you know into, into a movie yep. and so they didn't even try to cover the life story they just talked backstage at product <clears throat> introductions because they're like that's what people want to hear so but 
but most people that know kind of the Steve Jobs story were disappointed that they're like, well, that's not what happened. And and they, it was just hard to, to grasp that. So I guess what I'm saying is people are <coughs> interested in the real story, even if you think it doesn't make for Okay, no, no, the, the real story does actually make for entertainment because it's <laughs> brutally honest and yeah. it probably will show some bad. So Not before I forget, uh, we're talking about your books, and what are those called? So you want me to just lay them all out there? Lay them out there. Okay, so we have a epic fantasy series called I Will Protect You, and we currently have two books for that. The Trinity of Heroes is the first book, and the second book is a grim ultimatum. Grim is spelt with two M's, and we are currently in production of the third book. Uh, is that title that we talked about? The Fall of Heroes, is that happening? I think it's going to be that. The third book we are currently in production on is called the fall of heroes what was the first one the trinity of heroes i don't know why i'm taking notes i don't use them for anything that's all right that's all right Um, (laughs) no i will i'm I'm, I'm just kidding so we also have another shorter form fantasy series called a quest of dragons that one's a little bit a little bit that's a separate series yes it's a lot less refined pretty much just my own standalone project where pretty much just do pretty much whatever i want uh but it is uh a little bit more there are a little bit more adult themes. Uh, it's much more graphic in some ways. And sometimes it's just for the sake of humor. Sometimes it's yeah. just for the sake of I saw a scene I really liked and I wanted to create that in book form, so I did it. So and I be- think, well, I think part of the thing is, you know, in, in the I Will Protect You books that we're writing, we are creating a world and we're creating, we're really focused on world building, character building. And then in these other series that we're writing, like A Quest of Dragons, it's more just action and we're not as I don't want to say not as character driven but we're not as like world building and making sure detail detail like detailing every tree and rock you know that type of thing so so, we're just moving the story moves a lot faster and it's being written in shorter volumes where I will protect you you know the volumes are 300 pages 145,000 words they're a full book uh, a we full al- novel. We also have uh, a, I'm going to call it a light novel hybrid project. I do not have pictures for it, but it is called Tokyo Lightning. It is kind of my take on a, if I were creating an anime, so for those of you that know what it is, for those of you that care about it, you'll know. That's my target audience. Uh, kind of like... Little girls? No. Uh, so I guess that's if that's the first thing you think of. That's I'm just uh, so, so it is a high school drama action so, kind of superhero style okay. story. The, the only reason I said that is because uh, I put a I put a picture of me up with my I have my stupid sunglasses up. I don't I have I don't have on, and uh, and my headphones and. I put it on Facebook, and a friend of mine said that it looks like an anime character. Yeah. And so then I, th- I thought, oh, I'm going to be clever, and I'm going to Google for some yeah, anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all like... First thing you got was girls. probably Sailor Moon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. Or girls with big, shiny eyes yes. and scantily yeah. clad. Yes. So that's what a lot of people think. With anime. <laughs> and, that's, and that's fine. Uh, so anyway, Tokyo Lightning is a high school drama with some action interspersed uh, kind of... I Have you ever say- seen Kick-Ass? There's, it's... It kind of draws a little inspiration. A little from inspiration from that, but I don't want little give girls people... again. <laughs> sure, but I don't want to give I don't want to give people the I don't want to give people the um, inclination that it's like on a like worldwide basis. Everything takes place in a on a high school campus in yep. uh, in Japan, and it's, it's it's just been a very fun adventure. We actually just published the fifth volume of that. Wow. So, that, so how long are these books? Uh, Those are maybe 100 pages. Yeah, 80 70, to 100 75 pages. to 100 pages each, five volumes published, one collection of three volumes, and we're working on the sixth volume so we can get our second collection up. <laughs> you are a huge nerd. I know I am. <laughs> I've been waiting for that all day. Um, so aside from that... He was I, excited for me to play I that. Was, <laughs> I was waiting for him to play that. So anyway... <laughs> In addition to that, we have we do have a couple other just kind of like side ideas in the works. Nothing is set in stone yet, but I would definitely say uh, Tokyo Lightning, A Quest of Dragons, and I Will Protect You are our three main projects, and I Will Protect You is like the flagship for our, like if I wanted anybody to draw any opinion about our writings, it would come from the I Will Protect You series. So you guys write those together, right? How does that I, work? I Will Protect You. <laughs> we write together. Yeah. <laughs> The okay, well, Tokyo Lightning is almost is is a hundred percent created by Justin. Okay. All right, and I am the editor for that. Okay. So that's and 
I would say most of the creation because is, little girls aren't his thing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh boy, oh, that went so yes, quick. Yes, I like to distance myself from the subway, Jared. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but, should we high five? You know, just a random. Uh, well, well done. I, yeah, well, I, don't, I, don't, I do. But yeah, you know, the thing yeah. is, like everybody, yeah. you know, Jared's not a common name. Well, you're right. So you know, I, you know what? I I did not make that connection. I, well, thank you. Now. I'm happy you did. Really, really. But it's like, geez, so they're always like, oh, like yeah. Jared from Subway. And I was always like, yeah. <sighs> and now I'm just like, well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, you say it similarly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> At where, first we yeah. were like, yeah, Jared from Subway. And I was just like, oh, no, not Jared uh, from Subway. That's uh, not weird. Yeah. 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 So anyway. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> random little thing there. But anyway, so so the creativity and, and the story direction and the characters – because Justin is really the anime fan. Uh, okay, he watches a lot of it, and I would like to put it out there: I watch anime purely for the um, lack of story. <laughs> Just kidding. I watch it. I I enjoy it as like a as so like an art d- form. Okay, I enjoy so it. I never really know like which things fall into anime exactly. Because I watched Robotech. Is that anime? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, whatever. Okay. So yeah. it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Robotech is. Yeah. So like when like you were talking about like when people think of anime, they think of big shiny eyes, girls that are half dressed, and little girls, just like you were talking, is so much more than that. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to get into a discussion on that because that's not what this is for. But the Tokyo Lightning series focuses more on the drama and the relationships and building up some characters and having some cool twists and turns, and it's been very fun to. We're throwing some WWE style wrestling. Oh yeah, in there. definitely, definitely. We've thrown in some very cool references. They settle their they settle their disputes with uh, oh, okay. wrestling matches at the high school. Okay, you know that just makes for, sense. Just not like you know. Like, I mean, yeah, it yeah. sounds legit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you right. do want to read Tokyo Lightning, make sure you have a very open mind. Okay. Uh, and like a lot of animes you see, I mean, a lot of the stuff is like, oh, okay. so are they illustrated? No. Okay. Not okay. at this time. So you're just saying, I, like, I wish it, they were. Okay. It's just sort not. of inspired by that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a it's a literary. If if you could if you could take like a manga, which is a four panel. Yeah. Drawings. Four panel manga. If you could take that and strip all the pictures away and just have the actual written story, that's what it is. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And yeah. I, I always tell people if I had an artist that was dedicated and that's all they did and they did nothing else and they weren't going to get paid unless it got over and we got famous, I would have my own manga because I think the story is yeah. great. Okay. I just can't draw. Neither of us. So no, um, I kind of I, uh, I think I diverged from our – how, right. like, how did this like actually – like, oh, how how does how how do you go from like the uncensored version of how we got <laughs> into the books? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So for anybody listening, this is the truth, a hundred percent truth, no filler behind how Jared and I got into writing our books. I'll tell you the entire story. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So my friend called me one night. I was sitting in my room playing Xbox. Big surprise. And my friend calls me one night and says, "Why don't you come over? Let's hang out. We'll play some video games and drink some whiskey." So I went over to his house, and I get over there, and he's got his laptop open, and he's got some stuff typed up. I'm like, what is that? He says, oh, this is my story for Nano Remo, and this was 2000, what, 2011, 2012? Sure. And I'm like, well, what the hell is that? He said, oh, that's National Novel Writing Month. And I'm like, oh, well, good for you. You know, and that was my honest response. Now, don't don't bury me Which for is that. like November, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. every November. I'm, yeah. like, okay. I'm like, okay, now I'm like, good for you, dude, whatever. Give me a beer, and let's play some Xbox. And we're sitting there playing this playing this game, and he says, you know, you should try writing something too. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm really going to do that. Mm-hmm. And I went, I'm not kidding you, I went home that night, I pulled out a notebook, and I just started writing. And I didn't write all night. I didn't write till 6 in the morning. And, you know, right. like you hear sometimes, it wasn't like that. Well, when we have the movie version. <laughs> Sure. You want Matt Damon to play you? <laughs> oh, God, no. Actually, maybe. Sure. Only if he's stuck on Mars. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that movie. Shut up. I do, too. I do, too. So, anyway. So, but, anyway. Yeah. So, I had this. But I heard the book was much better, which is, of course, typical. But, yeah. <laughs> so, I had this I had this base, and I just thought to myself, I'm like, I want to include everything that I love. I want to include heroic characters, really epic finisher attacks, uh, some anime style reunions, some really 
depressing deaths and i'm thinking to myself okay let's right. just write let's just let's just write you know let's you just do like, it like this Falcon punch <laughs> so i will get all those references so anyway a hundred pages later and I've got, what was it, two or three generations? Lawrence, Lambert, Lyron. So I've got three generations of characters. Well, you stuck with it for 100 pages, yeah. which, which I at the time was just amazed by. I'm After like, dude, 30 pages, wait. he's going to quit. That's what he oh, was I'm amazed. still that's, amazed. That's me. That's if my... I had to write three pages in school, I'd be like, uh. Well, I think we're all like that because it's always writing on stuff you don't want to well, write about. Sure. You know, sure. that's hard to stay motivated. And, and, yeah, and so, <laughs> and so it, it just gives you this, like, it's it like just, a cathartic. It you know, feels thing. overwhelming though. When yeah. I hear a hundred pages, oh. that sounds like so, so my the, life's work. <laughs> there was a yeah, yeah. So there was a point where I stopped writing it about the fifty-page mark, and at the time, uh, Isaiah Knoll was working for me. Hi, Isaiah. Uh, he was working for me. He's a he's a very I will almost call him like a little brother to me because we we were very close when he was working in that store, and I kind of I don't want to say I kind of raised him, but like we we both kind of like I was going through kind of a difficult time with you know my breakup whatever that's irrelevant and he was going through a difficult time in school and he just wanted to be done and go to work and so whatever you know it's not for everybody yeah and so we kind of like we kind of helped each other out a little bit just you know stuck by each other and you know supported each other and he says to me he said well what's going to happen to Lawrence now and I said who cares that's exactly what I said don't don't pin me down fans don't pin me down and he said, well, I want to know, and you should write it. I went home, pulled out more paper, and started writing. So I think there's now, nothing, you know, that brings up a good, there's like nothing that motivates a writer more than, than having somebody want to read their book. Yeah. Right? I mean, that is yeah. it. That's, that's everything. That's the pinnacle for any author. You know. No matter what they tell you. Yeah. I want to make more money. No, I actually want somebody to sit down and read my book and say, I actually really loved your story. Well, thank you. That is the biggest honor to me. Absolutely. Hey, I, I, I totally see that. I, I just want to interject here yeah. while you're talking about that. I'm, I'm doing a little research in the in the back. And uh -oh. I don't know if it's necessarily your preferred sales method, but you, you know you're available on Amazon? Yeah. You got 13 five-star reviews. High five. Yeah, High that's, five. that's for the Trinity yeah. of Heroes. Yeah. Like. Perfect five stars, and you're also rated over on Goodreads at like 4.5. Sweet. That's pretty wow. awesome. Yeah. That, that is pretty awesome. And so, you know, he says to Good me. Good research, Nick. Wow, Nick. They now also, and I don't know if they tell you this or if this is a, something you apply for, you're now available for free on Kindle Unlimited. Yes. Oh, yeah. We know that. <laughs> That's know pretty that. cool. Yeah, we use the Kindle Unlimited. We, 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 really, a lot. we promote heavily on Amazon. Yeah. Nice. But so I don't want to. Sorry. Have to tell this whole Go ahead. Story. Sorry. I got to tell this whole story yeah. because I feel like this is like this is a story you won't get. Yeah. Unless you ask me and you tell me I can be brutally honest. Yeah. Which Jared's giving me permission to do. Yep. I didn't. At the time, I didn't care what happened to the characters. All I knew is that Lawrence had to live. He had to marry Elsie. They had to have a son, and he had to marry somebody else, and this had to happen. And no, None of my heroes could die. I had Harry Potter syndrome, and that's just the way it is. Don't sue me. That's just the way it is. I had that, all right? And Can you so get sued for having Harry Potter syndrome? Well, maybe for mentioning it. I don't know. <laughs> So I had that, all right? Maybe I'll kill an older brother. And oh God, I don't want to catch it. Keep it away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to catch it. So anyway, so anyway I, I was very, um, it was very, um, you know, it wasn't lovey-dovey, but it was very rough. And it was very, good guy always succeeded. And the only time the good guy failed was when he was built up to succeed again. It's like, oh, come on. So Jared brought that to my attention later, but I digress. I'll go back to that. So I kept writing. I kept writing. So all of a sudden he has a son and now they're fighting a zombie evil demon dragon that's come back from hell. And uh, something about a blade falling from the sky. I can't remember that stuff. Uh, it, it was, I'm telling you, it was a long time ago. Yeah. But so these things, it all started. I was writing and his friend comes home from college one night or from work, he was work, visiting yeah. from Minnesota, and I was so excited to tell him about it. Now this is where it gets ugly. This is where I get depressed. Oh. I was so excited to tell him about it, right? And he just buried me. And probably the best thing that ever happened to me, but it sucked. I felt so bad afterwards. Well, we were just, because it, I... it's like whenever, when you're so... an author, and when you're an aspiring author, and you have somebody that you respect tell you your work sucks, that's hard. It's well, hard. I, don't, I don't know if, Okay, so I think what we were saying is was it's not is it needs a lot. It of needed work. a lot of work. Like we, I read things critically from a uh, more grammar and more uh, story building perspective. I read them from a more content, more this is more action and more like yeah. mm -hmm. does so, what I want to happen happen yeah. perspective. Yeah. Yep. So, so we have two very different ways that we look at things, right? And 
So it was very hard for me to handle, especially hearing come from somebody, his best friend, that I had such high respect for. He, he's very intelligent, somebody that I really looked up to. And for better or for worse, he pretty much buried it and said, look, this is bad. Your work. ideas are here, the ideas but it's there, bad. But it needs a lot of work. But it's hard but to this, handle But this was your person. first book. Yes, you're right. It's hard to hearing that as a- My as first a, book is horrible, because I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> but like my, you know, my point is, it, for any aspiring authors out there, the best thing somebody can tell you is how bad your work is. Because oh, yeah. if, you, if you let a parent read it or you let yeah. a best friend read it, they're going to be like, oh, my God, this is, this is so great. You should be an author. And then you're going to put it up on, uh, what's that called? We used Authonomy. So you're going to put it up on some place like Authonomy in the UK, and you're going to get these guys that eat, sleep, breathe, and drink fantasy every day, and they are going to slaughter you. And you're going to be like, Crying. I should never write again. Yeah, and then you'll never and, write again. And okay, all right. <laughs> so that was kind of where I was at at this point. So, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't mad at him for being honest with me because it, I knew it wasn't awesome. I'm not, you know, it I'm not wasn't. Do- okay, so the, I think the thing is, it wasn't polished. Yeah, is the absolutely, key. it wasn't. The ideas were there. The foundation was there for a good story, but it was what you said: three generations happening within a hundred pages. The you know, so like the way you had the story progressing was characters just, meet the bad guy, escape the bad guy, regroup, fight the bad guy, win. That yeah. was the pattern, and it happened three times. And for me, it worked. Right. For most readers, that don't work. Sure, and that's fine. So I went back to my room that night, sat down, and was like, "Oh, this is dumb." Put it in a folder. I'm like, "I'm never gonna touch this again." Five minutes later, he walks into my room, show me what you have, and I'm like, "What?" It was the first time he'd taken any interest in my story. So I do kind of owe it to that conversation with his friend. I do kind of owe it to that conversation for at least letting me put the ideas out there in an unrestricted way so maybe he could see or hear something that would get his attention. Okay, fast forward a week or so, and he's got a notebook in his hands, and he's like, well, I want to try writing a chapter. Just a chapter, an intro chapter. I'm just going to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are an idiot. I'm just going to do it. I did not hit that button. I did. <laughs> so anyway. That so, was the awkward pause. <laughs> so anyway. So anyway. All right. Okay. So we just we just kind of like threw it in. He's. I'm just going to do a chapter. I'm like, all right, do a chapter. Whatever. I don't care. Take over my project. I don't know. Whatever. And I told the, Isaiah, I said, Jared wants to write a chapter. He said, well, let him. Isaiah actually wrote a chapter for me. Wow. So we have a couple chapters. Jared's was very polished, very refined for the time. Okay, remember, we're mm-hmm. speaking first ever authors. I read it. I was like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And then, of course, I, was like, I don't want my book to go that route. And I argued with him up and down. I'm like, no, it's, it's not going to be like well, that. Well, I wanted to start killing off some Okay, good, okay. Not okay. necessarily Shh. killing off the characters, but I wanted it to be a little more drama. Now, okay, wait. he's right. We, we, we haven't had a fist fight in the studio yet. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, but he's, he's absolutely right. And it's very hard for me. These were characters that I, whether anybody can respect it or not, they were characters that I was in love with and that I was invested in. And the concept of killing uh, even the parents of one of my main characters was hard for me. And it should be hard for any author who's just getting into writing. Now, if somebody like George Martin, he's like, bye, 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 and then he plays the NSYNC or Backstreet Boys song, and he's just like killing them off left and right. Well, for me, it was very difficult. And there was a lot of times where we argued about who we would kill off. And this is just talking writing the first book. And so Jerry comes on board, he writes a chapter, and pretty soon he's writing two chapters, and now he's writing a third chapter, and I'm writing a fourth chapter, and now we've got a whole sorcerer storyline. And and well, we were able to actually sit down and plan out the book yeah. so that we could have a, a story. Yeah, you know? and so we were originally planning one book, and then all of a sudden we're like, eh, F it, let's go six books. And it was like, so it was an extremely- That's crazy. It was an extremely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ambitious? Yeah. It was an extremely ambitious change to our original project to go six books as opposed to one book. And, cause I could have told the whole story in one book. We could have, and we could have ended it right there and that could have been it. Could have rushed it. Yeah. And it wouldn't have had the character development it would that not we have. wanted. It would not have. But, so from start to Jared joining, then six months later, we published our first book. And on Create Space through Amazon, and we're printing these books. And Isaiah actually drew that little smoky dragon that you see mm-hmm. in the orange book. Isaiah actually drew that. That's a cell phone picture that was emailed to me run through a filter. 
Nice. That's all we had at the time. Sure. I didn't have Photoshop. I didn't have any of that stuff. Right. I didn't have my camera. I didn't know what right. we were doing. I, I didn't even take it that seriously, to be honest with you. To be brutally honest, I didn't yeah. take it that seriously. Yeah. And so it was the opportunity of a lifetime when Jared came on board because I am not I'm not going to say I'm not as smart as Jared because that's not true. You're smart in different ways. I'm smart in very different ways. Yeah. That, I cannot that put me on that okay. same level of smartness. No, wait, no, wait. That's important. <laughs> I just okay. want to compare so people, myself. A lot of people ask us, how do you guys sit down and... and... Run! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to overdo the soundboard. It just how... felt like it needed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> how do... Okay, so a lot of people ask us, how do you guys work together? Sure. Right. I mean, that's super hard. Now we already work together all day. Yeah. Right at the store. Yeah. Okay. But the same thing about us working there is applied to writing the books. We. Okay. So I I have I have a theory. So in this, so people do get killed off. Yes. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you guys are characters in the book, and you make your characters kill off Justin's characters, and vice versa. No. And this is how you let out your no. aggressions. No. We nah, don't, no, we don't. I don't. <laughs> Wait, uh, so I've never asked him this. Have you picked a personal character in the book yet? Do you have a character that you think represents you, other than Razias? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is, no. it, is, is that you this guy? You are a huge nerd. <laughs> no, he's Razius is our Razius is our villain, but that's a that's a joke. That's no, a joke. I, um, I I do not. I haven't either. No. Okay, so you know what? I have not read the books, and that's because I feel like. Uh, Max is your target market. Am I dead wrong about that? How Should I be reading these? How old is Max again? He's uh, 11-ish. He's My be, target be market is anywhere from old enough to understand a fantasy story, okay, which so. can start at 5, sure. it can start at 10, it can start yeah. at 20, yeah. depending on how open-minded you are. Max seems very open-minded. Yeah. And I would say there is no age limit. Yeah. So you'd probably enjoy Did you like Lord of the Rings? Uh, Don't re sue me. Reading it? No. <laughs> did you like the story? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody. I think everybody does. Yeah. yeah. Did Did you? Did you? Okay. Did you like Star Wars? Of course. It, it, Softball question. <laughs> okay. Well. Anyway. Anyway. If you, you know, if you if you sit down, if you were to sit down and read our book, the first one, I don't think you would view it as a waste of time. I think you'd really enjoy it because it has those kind of elements. Yeah. It has those kind of story elements and. I wasn't going with the whole Luke, I am your father thing. I, I didn't, you know, we, we kind of do like the whole with Jareth and stuff in the first book, but it wasn't meant to be, you know, an homage to Star Wars or anything. So any Star Wars fan would read that be like, oh my God, there's just Darth Vader and Luke all over again. Is it's, that is that, how, is that the voice of Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the voice I use when I'm speaking like somebody else. But, you know, so it's just, we, the... <laughs> You, I have to know my place as a writer. My place is not as an editor. As much as he'd like it to be, yeah. it's never going to be. Yeah. That's it's, that's the point I want it to be. I really struggle sure. with that, with punctuation, grammar, and that stuff. But I can give Jared the idea. I cannot yeah. sit down and create a scene from scratch. Yeah, I can do now, it. If he gives a, me, I can do it in a heartbeat. If he gives me the bare bones of the scene, I'll fill in the details and make it phenomenal. Make it read nice. No, he'll make it phenomenal. He won't just make it read nice. He'll make it awesome. So this but, is what's amazing. So I feel like I'm the Justin and Gina's the Jared because sure. like she'll be like, I don't know. I don't know where to start. I yeah. just just put it together. And then she'll rewrite the whole thing, yeah. and I want to strangle her. And, that, well. <laughs> and she'll start so, killing off characters you like, right? This is how I feel. And it could yeah. be the dumbest thing. It could be whatever. It could be a, a, a contract, a, a marketing piece, whatever, right? It could be anything. We'll just start it. Get it started. And then she'll do That's the That's the hardest thing. part. Oh. Even for even for like aspiring authors out there <laughs> listening to this, yeah. starting is yeah. impossible yeah. 90% of the time. If you can just start, like if I just- See, get, finishing is hard for me. If I get the first sentence, I am golden. Yeah. I can write the whole chapter. Hmm. But if I don't get a- perfect first sentence I just I'm stuck oh. and I don't want to write it at all yeah, yeah. so that's my problem Justin will just go that's right amazing. he'll just here's go your world, and here's the characters here's what's happening he'll just start writing. really cool effects and, and you it'll be it rough good. it'll be terrible unpunctuated you know it'll it'll be no paragraphing it'll be very very raw but it's something and I always feel like we're accomplishing and moving toward the goal when I can sit down and oh well here let's give him a little description here let's right. let's have the characters have a little bit of a you know difference here you know type so of thing. you think for your work people should start with that first book in the series the you, trinity of heroes you have to well it okay. wouldn't make 
it would, or you're going to have to just accept everything okay. in book two. <laughs> okay. 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 So, I mean, so you, that's a you good could, point, though. You could read yeah. book two as a standalone and be like, well, here's characters that have been developed, and they talk enough yeah. about what happened in the first book that you'd be okay. Well, I right. guess what I'm wondering is, you know, when you think about Star Wars, like the, yeah. the first ones were awesome, the second set. You know, whatever people have different opinions, yeah. right? So, are they a standalone? Are they not? I, I like know. the fight Star Wars. With, I like the fight with Darth Maul. I thought that was cool. So, I do want to uh, I, I poorly like segue into my other sponsor. Okay. Uh, and this is one I, I think you guys don't know about, and I think would actually help you guys too. And you don't have to say much about it because you're not. We're not here, you know. Uh, but uh, it's a company called Release Wire. They're based in Green Bay, and they have clients worldwide. They have like ninety five thousand small businesses that they <laughs> helped promote things, and they have a uh, press release service so like when you guys launch another book I think that that's a could be a huge benefit to you guys uh, and you can go right to their uh, they have a website called Con- uh, release wire connect and you can go to connect.releasewire.com and set up a free account and you can like build a business profile so you could do it for the store you could do it for you know your book business whatever and um, and anybody listening of course should should do that too that's free you should fill out uh, a, a business profile uh, probably can do it in a half hour or less and they have press release services though that will get you into hundreds of different you know media places so uh, I don't know if you've ever you were in marketing so I don't know if you ever did press releases before it's a pain in the butt because um, you have to like you know if you're trying to do a local press release you got to gather all the email addresses or the fax numbers uh, yeah, and I'm sure none of them use faxes anymore. But you know, back when we did that stuff, like, uh, and some of them probably do use faxes. I have no idea, and it's a it's a pain in the butt. Um, so uh, I think all they really want is for people to go to connect or release connect dot release wire dot com and uh, fill out a profile. And this guy, small businesses in Green Bay helping small businesses. Uh, Dan runs this place, and I've known Dan forever. And he just wanted to help me do my show, so he's my sponsor. And I, I, I couldn't do, I really couldn't do this stuff without Nick for sure, right? I mean, that's evident, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, without Dan, so uh, thanks to Release Wire, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody is getting out there and filling out a profile because that's free. It's sort of like a you know fancy Facebook page. I, sure. I would think about it that way. Okay, so. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about uh, the book and the store and everything, but uh, I want to make sure that I didn't miss any important stuff. I'm trying to I'm trying to be professional and organized. <laughs> uh, so I've been doing kind of a rapid fire thing, and I think that's kind of interesting. Um, well, okay, actually, this is something that I did kind of miss. Um, uh, so, and b- both of you separately, what's something that you are the most proud of? I think that's a good question that people would like to know. And maybe aside from what we talked about, and if you don't have anything, that's okay. You can punt on that. Um, Being able to upgrade the store, yeah. like we have, uh, and for my uncle and my dad. Yeah. So you know what I did want to touch to, on that. to be able to come in there, yeah, and to not royally screw it up. Yeah. I mean, really, because I mean, yeah, that's a fear in the back of my mind. Right. I, I said that it wasn't something that was, pre- you know, I didn't have the pressure of having to succeed when I got there, but I wanted to, you know. I mean, so we're going to give Justin a chance to think. Um, so what are some of the things that you did upgrade? Because, I mean, okay. there were some that were very visible, but for anybody who hasn't been in the store, I'd like you to kind of paint a picture of some of the things that are really cool there. Sure. So when I got there, I mean, pretty much all of our freezers and coolers were from the 70s. I mean, they just were. Outdated. So every one of those has been updated. Yeah. Uh, and they've been upgraded to like the new zero zones with the LED lightings and you know that actually really display the product nicely. So that is probably the single best thing we've ever done because it just it gave us like 50% more space in the cooler and freezer aisles. Oh, really? I mean, which is I guess it just sort of seems that way, but yeah. I, I got I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. So you know, before we had the old bunker cases that started like 3 feet off the ground. So now these new cases start six inches off the ground. Sure. So you're automatically gaining two feet all the way around your store wow. of stuff to sell. Yeah. So, you know, yes, our store looks small from the outside, but it's yeah. full service store and it has everything in it that, you know, it, like I said, it doesn't have 18 brands of ketchup, but it has ketchup. It has mustard. Might not have 20 varieties. 
But but you know what? You do have a good selection of craft beer. Oh yeah, and of course that the alcohol before two thousand eight, we were not able to have alcohol in our store. Oh okay. Okay, that was a city ordinance. So obviously we could not be a complete store. Okay, because yeah, a lot of times you want to buy beer and booze mm-hmm. together. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah, so. For people that wanted to come and buy the beer at our store, they'd still have to go somewhere else to get the booze. Right. Which, of course, is very annoying. Um, that changed in 2008. The city took out some of those ordinance laws, and we were able to get a full liquor license. So we were able to become a fully complete store. Now, with the alcohol, the beer, and, of course, the craft beer thing has just exploded, mm-hmm. and you can't keep up. I mean, we just can't keep up with that. I mean, no. there's so many. Right. You could have... You could literally replace all our craft beers with new craft beers every, every single day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> I mean, really, every day and still Probably. not run out of them. It's oh, just, absolutely. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So it's a great day to be a beer drinker because you don't ever have to tr- drink the same beer twice. Yeah. So, you know, that's been a very big help, obviously, for us. But being able to have the space, you know, you can bring in all the stuff you want. If you don't have the space and you're not able to display it nicely and keep it cold or, you know, for the beer especially, that's kind of, you know, a moot point then. Right. So so I'd say that's really been, like, the thing I'm most proud of is just being able to say, hey, look, I came in here, I had this opportunity, and we were able to make something great out of it. Yeah. You know? I mean, otherwise, I don't know. It would probably just be an empty parking lot today yeah. i mean yeah or there'd be something else there but it wouldn't be a grocery store probably right so yeah so i'd say i'd say i'm very happy about that very proud of that yeah well uh as an outsider uh and you know whatever i go there relatively frequently yeah. but uh uh you know i'm not in your business right um from the outside it's amazing the changes are amazing and that's not to take anything away from yeah, what was built no. before because i don't want to do that yeah that, but uh yeah. but but you but but it shows that you're. It's not that you, like you reinvented everything, but it shows that you're pushing forward and you want progress. Yes. and that's you're you're taking one of Green Bay's favorite businesses and bringing it into whatever you can say. Use whatever you want to bring it into the 21st century. Yeah, right? it's true though. You know, so and true. new registers, right? New lighting, just paint, new decor. Yeah, it drove me crazy when I couldn't machines. use my uh, my credit card back whenever. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Now, but Okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> we just got new credit card terminals. Oh, I'm sure. So, well, I, yeah, but, yeah. But, but you're right. For a while, we didn't even accept credit and debit cards. Right. That's and, what I mean. And that is true. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, that was, you know, so it took us a while to kind of <laughs> sure. get with it, yeah. so to speak. But it's been nice now that we have and then the customer base has responded and that's oh, been yeah. awesome because yeah. yeah you you know you're always apprehensive you know hey do i make these investments do i do all this stuff are people going to care you know well yeah they do care they want to see that they want to see hey this business in our community mm-hmm. wants to be here i mean yeah. and then when they show the support and then we can upgrade more that's a win-win i mean i feel great about that when i go home at night and uh so the other thing that I really like about your store is that you employ kids from the neighborhood. Like I have always respected that back to when I was, you know, that age. Like um, that's uh, that's something that I think is an intangible benefit to small businesses that I think people don't realize. Uh, you know, you're uh, you're a gem in our neighborhood, and like there, I mean, the rest of the city. I mean, they're they're. You guys could probably have other, other stores because sure. it's uh it's it's necessary. So and I know small business is tough, but I don't want to uh I'm, I don't want to run out of time. And uh, I, I do want to hear from Justin. What are you most proud of? It could be anything. How long do I have for the story? Uh, not long. <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead. I'll cut you off. Okay. So it's, so anyway, it's, it's another it's another lovely story. But is that an inferiority complex where you feel like you're not as good as somebody else? Is that what that's called? I guess. Okay, so I have a very serious inferiority complex. That's evident. Just business people have that. I think that there's there's different things. There's like imposter syndrome. Where well, you, you I think, I know. have it for other reasons. Yeah. But so anyway, growing up, uh, education was really important in my family. Yeah. Like that was all that mattered. Nothing else mattered. Uh, you get straight A's or bust, and that's just the way it was. So I was always a three two five student, and I really looked up to Jared because Jared was very smart. Jared was a four point two five. He was, you know, we call him a genius, whatever you want to call him. He's very smart. Uh, so I never really, I mean, I had the capacity. I just didn't care. And so 
I walked in a conversation one day where I basically heard somebody tell my dad that he was going to have trouble with me growing up and I would never be anything. I would never amount to anything. And he would, I would be the leech on the family my entire life. It wow. was, yeah, that was tough. That is tough. Uh, I was 17 years old. Yeah. I was going through that time. It's exactly when you don't uh, want to so, get yeah, so, know, right? so Jared and I talk about this sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, well, I don't think they meant it that way. But, and, you know, they probably didn't. It doesn't matter, though. Yeah. It, you know, so I was, and I had enough trouble with my confidence as it was uh, when I was younger anyway. So I, I kind of said to myself, I'm not going to be a 4.0, and that's fine because that, that was never important to me. Uh, but growing up, when, when I was able to do things that Jared couldn't do, as bad as this is to be proud of it, I was extremely proud of it. When I was able to accomplish things that I saw him unable to even fathom, for me, that was very, I, I know I sound like a horrible person, but it's the no. truth. You wanna know the truth, that's the truth. Yeah. To be able to sit down and say, I'm gonna write a book, and have Jared say, I can't write a book at the time at the time yeah it was very that was rewarding for me and now to say we have books because of me and we have these red all deal videos because I pushed for these things and because I brought these things I feel like I've contributed to the business I feel like I've contributed to my brother and my own future that has been very important to me growing as an individual and some people may see that as arrogant some people may see that as you know you're a horrible person for saying that but at least i'm being honest with you mm. that's how i felt about it yeah. i wanted to i wanted to be able to say look i made a contribution and i did something my brother couldn't do that helped him that helped myself that maybe you know made us some money maybe brought us a little bit of attention you know i didn't screw something up for once I didn't cost my family a ton of money for once. Right. You know, I wasn't the I wasn't the black sheep for once. I was able to say I was able to say, "Hey, look. I can do it too. I just don't have to do it your way." Yeah. That was that was no, like I get that, that uh, was Yeah. I mean, uh so I'm the oldest in our family, but uh and my nobody listens to this show, so I don't worry about that. But uh you know, I have four younger brothers and uh uh one of my brothers is brilliant and it's disgusting and uh having to kind of live up to this yeah. nobody else is putting that on you mm -hmm. you know you're kind of putting that on yourself but you know you you know, and you magnify that when people hear these comparisons you magnify it and i'm not that's not that's not i'm not degrading you but um people are good at different things yep. so yep. It, it's tough try that's being like imagine being like a uh, a baldwin brother you know like uh, alec baldwin and he's got <laughs> like younger brothers and they're all actors and like and he's the famous one yeah. you know so uh all right so it's i and it, it is yeah. true and it it is it's like yeah I in no way mean any of that derogatory towards my no, brother. I know you no, don't. That I know is you don't. that is simply that was for me. I think me, everybody knows that. For me growing up, that was very important that I felt like in my own way, not on their terms, but on my own terms, I could bring something to the equation yes. that wasn't just me going to work every day and doing what he said. Yeah. I wanted to bring something to the equation that he would look at me and say, We wouldn't have it without you. Yeah. And whether yeah. it's an ego thing, whatever it is, I don't care and you can call me selfish if you want. But that is really how I felt. Well, and back in 2008, I, you know, and I don't, I'm not going to speak for Jared, but I, it, you know, when I hear this story unfold before me, that makes me think that uh, he felt all along maybe like he couldn't do it without you. And it is called Mason Brothers. Yeah. And uh, he wanted his brother there right with him. So. That was, that's, you know, the first choice, right? right. Yeah. It would have been different. The store would not be where it is today without Justin. I mean, yeah. there's just Good no job. way to put it. And, I, it's easy for me maybe to fix the things that I can see, but I can't, as I was saying with the books, create from nothing. And Justin can, and he can bring in ideas from nothing. Once I'm shown the idea, it's like the light bulb will go on, but the light bulb is dim until somebody else shows it to me. Right. And Justin just has that where he can see something awesome before anybody else does and and i didn't and again i didn't know if the the writing was going to come to anything or not right. but i knew if it was i i wanted it to i wanted to make it happen right. and i knew jared as good as he was right would make it happen well and your business drips with your personality i think that people just uh 
even if they even if they don't follow you on Facebook, I feel like that just shines through. Uh, it, you are a small business, and that that's that sort of is just par for the course, but sort of not. You know, there are some like very uh, personalityless small businesses, right? Sure. So mm-hmm. I well, yeah. I, you guys have you a know, lot that's to be something that we like about our store. Like, you go in there, you see people come in, you can call them by their first name, you can talk about the game with them, you know what I mean? You can ask them Absolutely. what they're doing Absolutely. Uh, later in the day, and it, it's like a... They don't get offended. They're no, it's like, like a friend, you know, almost like a friend thing in, so, in a lot of ways with a lot of Good customers. segue. So we're going to do rapid, like a rapid fire. That's We're going to end up okay. with that, all right? All right. So you said football. Uh, what's your favorite football team? <laughs> and I'll ask both. They get harder. Okay, Green Bay Packers. Uh, all right, you got one, Justin? Packers. Okay. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is a fan, and he'll be very upset if, you, if, you, if you're not The Green Bay in. Packers. Aaron, read my book. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're uh, Packer fans. So, we are. We are and, yes. and, okay, and I, I actually th- I think these are good questions. Uh, you know, I came up with them uh, a, f- a few back, and uh, they kind of apply to everybody. Um, but, you know, you guys have a food store. So, favorite entree? Oh, man, dude. Just say whatever Justin makes for me. That's good. Because he doesn't know how to cook. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, my brother's a very good cook. Uh, What do I like? God, how about pizza? Is that an entree? It is for me. Yeah. I mean, I I, I don't even know what my own answers are to any of these. Pizza. I'll just go pizza. Whatever. I don't have a favorite entree. I eat whatever's there. <laughs> I have to eat to survive, so I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what? That, that is another. That's a valid question because you know there's eat to live and live to eat people, right? I I feel like I live to wow. eat. <laughs> I do. If you, if you said to me this is what we're having tonight and like, all, all right. there is to eat, I'd say you got it. What's next? Uh, I like to eat. Okay. Favorite dessert? <sighs> Ice cream. Mochi. I don't even know what that is. Is that some kind of anime dessert? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite TV show? Oh, it changes. Well, the one, the one. Okay, the one that we really enjoy, or that I really enjoyed over the, let's say, in the last three years. Yeah. I would say Game of Thrones, but I don't watch it consistently because I don't have HBO. Right. So I'm gonna go Sons of Anarchy. That's my favorite TV show. Uh oh. Are we supposed to guess? No. <laughs> oh. sure, I'll just I'll just agree with Jared because I Sons of Anarchy is really good. You watch all seven yeah. seasons. I mean, if I watch all yeah. seven seasons of something, really yeah, you know, uh, and stick with it for that yeah. long, it's, it's a good one. Got to so, be good. Uh, favorite current movie, <sighs> like recent Jurassic World. Okay, ditto. Not The Martian because you haven't seen it. Yet. I haven't seen it. No, but Jurassic World was was. I haven't, seen, I haven't pa- seen that either. Jurassic Park was my favorite movie when I was a kid. Really? And it and it still has a special spot in my heart because we went with – I was like eight years old and I went with my family. It was just a really cool and experience. I cried so these are supposed to be fast, fast okay, answers. Okay, fine. Notice. <laughs> All right. Are we at like two hours yet? <laughs> uh, 120. Come on, we got 10 minutes for this story. Is the, this is the longest episode. No, we never hit it. You have at least – usually, <laughs> usually we're like 115-ish. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, All right. Okay. Sorry. I'm, no more stories. No, I'm just uh, – you, you, so that – We'll, we'll Brought round, me back to my we'll, childhood. We're going to round up with that because you'll be back. Right. Uh, uh, favorite classic movie that's old? This is that Yours is Jurassic Park. What's yours, Justin? Jurassic oh. Park. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you a different I, one. I think I'll give you one? a different one. Wait, I'll give I you a different like one. more than he did. Amadeus. Ooh. Ugh, really? Yeah. I'm sorry. Love it. It was interesting. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, favorite recent book? <laughs> A Grim Ultimatum by Jared and Justin Mason. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Got another one? The first Game of Thrones book. Uh, aptly titled. Yeah. A a Song of Fire and Ice. Song of Fire and Ice. A Game of Thrones. Favorite, the favorite, first one. Favorite singer or band? <sighs> right now, believe it or not. <laughs> <Hanson>. <laughs> Does it okay. matter? Doesn't matter. It could be a no. guilty pleasure. I don't care. Okay. I don't judge. Right now, what I'm listening to more than anything else, Nirvana. You're ashamed of that? No, I Love just from like the early '90s. Doesn't matter. Dragon Nirvana. Force. Dragon Force. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Of course. Yeah. See, I, you you are. Uh, it's either Dragon Force or a song from an anime. That's all I ever, <laughs> you all are, I ever listened you to. Are, you are a cartoon character. Justin. <laughs> I know I am. My whole life has been that way. Uh, favorite social media site. Ah. <laughs> we don't waste time on those. Tinder. <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> no, I guess Facebook because that's what we use. Yeah, no, yeah that's cool. Cool. Facebook. It, okay. it, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. And then uh, favorite for, favorite person to follow online. So probably on Facebook. So uh, we'll follow anybody. Uh, we don't. Use favorite person to follow. God, we have ideas oh with Elliot. 
Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. What's up, dude? <laughs> For real. Good job. All right. So when you come back uh, to guest host, uh, who would you like to have here? Aaron Rodgers. And I ha- and I have in parentheses. Please say Oprah. Okay, <laughs> but, but that was for me. All right, well, if I can't have no. uh, so a lot of people say Aaron Rodgers, which whatever, that'd be great, and I'd have a room full of people if that happened. But, uh, but, but really, I guess what I'm looking for there is someone that you think this would work for them. Merv and my dad, even better. Yeah, ditto. Uh, you know what? And truthfully, people can hear about Aaron Rodgers anywhere. Yeah, if you can't get Merv and my dad here, get Merv here. Yeah, yeah. let's so have Merv here. Just... So if Merv's here, we won't be here. Because a part of me is like, we, <laughs> no, because we, no. we can't. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh right, right, right. Oh, yeah. oh, crap. <laughs> See the perils so of a small do, business. We're going to clone Merv, yeah. and we'll get him in here then. Yeah, nice. It's nice. So, like we want to do a Red Owl documentary. Yeah. Like So Merv can like give us the history of this thing. Otherwise, because if, you know, I mean, Merv's getting older. Sure. Okay, let's be honest about it. Uh, I feel like a lot of the history and what he's done and why he's been in the store so long and – how he's been able to be in the store so long is going to be right. lost. It is. Yeah. Because uh, he's been there. I mean, mm-hmm. he's seen it all. So Yeah, well, let's get him in here. I'll have to see if we can. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. It'd be awesome. You might, Maybe early, early. You might have to, you know, you, you might have a tough... T- so so with people that aren't, like, you know, our age, uh, the hardest part is explaining to them what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Merv, so. Merv is pretty open-minded, though. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he, much more so than. I'm sure he can handle talking into the microphone. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's he 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 has a he knows how to text on a phone. I mean, he's 75. He texts. He knows how to text on a phone. He uses Facebook. I mean, he's pretty good. Pretty good on that stuff. So proud of him for that. Uh, so for the last track, we have uh, my home, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm copying and pasting for places. I'm like, oh, that wasn't from another episode. So that's going to be uh, <laughs> Kurt Gunn again. And Kurt Gunn, not Kurt Gunn again. Uh, <laughs> Kurt Gunn with My Home. Another uh, local artist. Maybe Thank you, guys. Gone, but not alone. Because you are here with me. Ever on I'm on. I can't forget your face. Oh, the king I love so strong So keep them safe Lord, I am gone from my home Don't forget to run over to iTunes and Stitcher and give a rating and review of the show. It helps other people find us.